certainly, but before I start, I'd just like to say a little bit about the need to screen for glaucoma. And to emphasize this, I've got a, a plot here on the slide you can see. And what it's plotting is the number of new cases detected in a whole series of epidemiological studies. So each one of these red discs represents a study that's been done somewhere in the world. And what they do is they examine the whole population, or as many as they can get. And obviously they then find some cases of glaucoma that are undetected, they're new cases. And what you can see in these studies is that all of those studies, basically 50% or more of the glaucomas they found were new. I, this really means that 50% or more of glaucoma cases are currently undetected. So there's an enormous need for screening so as these people can be detected earlier when the treatment is more effective and the long-term prognosis is much better. So as if you look specifically at ones near the UK, um, this study here, the North London study, 75% um, of the cases they found in North London were new cases. So even in a sophisticated health service that we have here where there's good access to healthcare, there's still a large amount of undetected disease and there's a need to screen. When you screen for glaucoma, you can do three things. You can look at the intraocular pressure. So raised intraocular pressure is a risk factor for glaucoma, but it's not part of the diagnosis of the disease. You can look at the back of the eye, looking for changes that occur to the eyeball itself. And you can do that with, a, with an ophthalmoscope, or you can look at it with an imaging device. And you can do perimetry. So none of these tests is perfect. So if we look at them individually, we could say, well, if you were to look at the pressure, and if you were to define a raised pressure as a pressure above 21 millimeters of mercury, by these people need to be seen further, then you find that the sensitivity of that is only about 45%. I, you're going to miss about 55% of the cases with glaucoma. And the specificity, that's the number of normal people who will pass the test, in this case have lower pressures, it's about 90%. So you'd end up with 10% of the normal population being referred as well. Now remember glaucoma affects about 2%, right? We already found half of them, so there's 1% to detect. And if you're going to have false positives of 10%, that means being referred to a hospital, 9 out of every 10 will be normal. If we look at ophthalmoscopy, that's examining the back of the eye with an ophthalmoscope, then its sensitivity is higher, and the figure I've given here, about 80%, is quite high, and it comes from a study that's recently been reported in which a large number of ophthalmologists in Europe were asked to look at a series of slides. So they were given slides of the back of the eye, 40 of the slides were from glaucoma eyes and 40 were from normal eyes, and they basically had to classify or discriminate the glaucomas from the normals. And what you found out with these highly trained ophthalmologists, 80% of the time they were right, they got 80% of the glaucomas, they missed 20% of them, and 84% of the normals were right, i.e. they would have false positively referred 15%. So the performance is much better than that of just measuring the pressure, but it still falls a long way short of what we'd like in a screening test. We'd really like the specificity to be above 95%, and we'd like the sensitivity to be above 90-something percent. Now, there's a lot of technological developments in imaging at the moment. So, for instance, we have the Heidelberg retinal tomograph, we have the GDX, we have OCT equipment, which can look at the back of the eye and, and extract certain measurements, and then we can use those measurements to decide do they do not have glaucoma. For detecting glaucoma, from differentiating people who've got field loss from those that don't have field loss, they do not perform very well. They're about 65% sensitive, that would be the HRT and the GDX, when their specificity is about 95%. So that again, as a single measure, isn't very good. Now what, what I want to emphasize is that if you put all the measures together, you get higher performance. Okay, so as if you say, rather than one test, I'll do three tests, then you get very high sensitivity. Now, before I give you an idea of 
how sensitive and specific field test is, they want to define these terms a bit better. So when you do a screening test, you want a test that is very sensitive, i.e. it picks up a high proportion of the patients who've got the disease. So what we want is 100% sensitive test. But the other thing we want is 100% specific test, i.e. never fails a normal person. And of course, we also want the test to be quick. Now, it doesn't take a sort of a, a genius to realize that sensitivity, specificity, and speed, you have to compromise. So if you want a fast test, you're not likely to have super high sensitivity and specificity. You know, you've got to sacrifice one of these, and if you like, it's the skill of the perimetrist designer to optimize the performance of these three measures. But for the moment, if we just say what we want is 100% sensitivity, 100% specificity, and a fast test. So in this slide here, I'm, I'm showing some results that we've just recently published. Um, and what this, what this study did was it took a large population of people who have glaucoma and a large popular pa population of people who do not have glaucoma. Okay, so these are people with field loss. And then it said, where is the best place to put a stimulus where it picks up the maximum number of glaucoma cases? Okay, so this would be a point that's regularly missed by glaucomas and rarely missed by normals. Okay. So as if you just put one point in a field test, the amazing figure is you would find 20% of the people with glaucoma would miss it. So if you said, all right, let's have two points and put those in the best places, then the sensitivity goes up higher than 20%. And as you add more and more test points, so the sensitivity gets higher and higher. And that's what these little diamonds are showing in this graph here. You can see as we go up the graph here, as we increase the number of test stimuli, the sensitivity of the test goes right up. And when you get to about 26 stimuli, you have a test that's practically de detecting all the glaucomas. So every person in our glaucoma sample would have missed one of these 26 points, or nearly everybody would have. So the message here is you don't need to test a lot of points to get a very high sensitivity level. But what the graph also shows is specificity. And the more points you add to your test, the lower the sensitivity comes. Okay? So the chances of a normal person missing a point obviously increase if you present more points. Okay? So as you increase the number, the specificity goes down. So if we looked at a test here of 26 points, what we'd find sensitivity, fantastic, nearly 100%, specificity, 80%, not very good, far too many false referrals. But with 26 points, it's going to be quick. So we have high sensitivity, speed, but low specificity. So this is the way the Henson deals with it. And it's a, it's a flow chart I've put it in to give you an idea of what would happen. So what we have at the top here is 100 patients and 2%, the ones in red here, have glaucoma and 98 are normal. So what you'd do is you'd screen them with the 26 points. Okay? The specificity is 80%, so 80% of the normals would disappear, they'd pass the test, right? but 20% would fail the test along with our two glaucomas. In the Henson, we then have three options. One, you can extend the test, and I'll talk more about this on the next slide. Okay? That will be test more points. You can retest the missed points because the Henson allows you to manually retest each point as many times as you like. Or thirdly, you could add more test points. So basically you can test around the missed point by just touching the screen. Okay? And that then raises the specificity so you separate out, you now have your two glaucoma cases and you can dismiss the 18% of normals. So this would all be dealt with in probably a test of less than a minute per eye. And then in these cases, it would take a little bit longer to ascertain whether they really are glaucomas or just false positives. So the important point here is this range of options you have down here 
to raise the specificity and that's what's different about the Henson compared to the other perimeters. You can retest as many times as you like, you can extend the testers to add more stimuli and you can add additional points around miss points in order to raise specificity. So this flexibility is unique? Yes, pretty much. it's a unique in this machine. So this slide here again emphasizes the first point about extending the test. So most perimeters have a fixed number of stimuli in the test and when you finish the test you want to test more you do another test. Okay, you can't basically just simply extend the test. In the Henson what we have is here's our 26 point test if they miss one of the points here then we just press a button and it adds a lot more points to it okay, to confirm or, or dismiss the case as a true glaucoma or as a false positive. And you can extend it even further, right up to 136 points, if you wish to plot the extent of the field loss. Okay? So this is the extend, but remember you can also go to any point in the field and on the touch screen, just touch the area and it will present a stimulus in that location.